Guys, I'm home from Louisville, Kentucky, but this is going to be a great video. It's the last video we have on the National Farm Machinery Show. We got plenty of YouTubers, guest stars. We got some cool interviews. You guys are going to want to stick around because we got a lot of equipment coming up. Case IH, John Deere, Kloss, just to name a few. Stick around. Family Farms and today it's second and final day for me at the National Farm Machinery Show. I'm just getting up and getting going I should say. It is eight o'clock. I'm late already. So I need to get moving. Let's go. All right, I'm back in the whip, the rental whip. Let's get moving. See if I can get there by 815 so we can get in and get some good shots for you guys. All right, we made it. Let's head in. Ooh, looks like Welker's decided to stop by. That's pretty cool. Day two, National Farm Machinery Show. Love getting in here early because there's not a massive crowd. And that's always fun. So let's go get some pictures and some cool videos. So I haven't toyed around in the Massey's booth at all. I've never actually driven a major row crop tractor of Massey's. Have you guys ever tried them before? Especially the new S series. I've heard decent things about them, but hey, there's just not a ton of them in my area. There is a dealer for them. But you just, I don't even think there's an S series in my area. So what do you guys think? This 8370, how many horsepower? 8370, two, why am I shocking everything? That was like shocking. 295 horsepower is what this thing is. Looks a sharp looking tractor. I like the new styling. It's pretty cool. So I'm gonna be hanging around the West Wing today. So my Lily, the first thing that I see when I walk into West Wing is Balzer Manufacturing's equipment. I don't know much about Balzer, but every time I see one of their pieces of equipment, it's always just massive. I know they make grain carts and liquid manure tankers, but whew, a 7650. I'm gonna guess that's a 7,000 gallon manure tanker, or maybe 7,500 gallon. I don't know, either way, it is just huge. They got a two, oh wow, 2,500 bushel grain cart. That's the biggest one I've ever seen. I know Brent just came out with a 2,500 bushel, but Oh my lord. Oof. That is crazy. This baller's just got some pretty big equipment. Alrighty guys, day two of the National Farm Machinery Show. I'm here with Sean with Balzer Equipment, and he's gonna show us a little bit more about these uh, 
these two massive pieces of equipment here. I'm really interested in the grain cart. So Sean, go ahead and take it away. Yep, so uh, this is our first 2550 bushel uh, grain cart. We got it sitting on triple axles, uh, comes standard with you know, six, 900 tires. Um, we have a, a patented steering system, so the front and rear axle steers. Okay. We've got hydraulic suspension on each axle. Um, so these cylinders down here, we set at 50% capacity for each side. Oh wow. Um, you get 14 inches of stroke. That's crazy. I didn't even realize that. just to crawl through the field. Yeah, that makes so sense. So it makes it a much smoother pull. Um, makes it a lot easier to pull in the field, especially when it's low. Makes sense. So basically it's always trying to keep that ground contact between everything. Yep, keep that ground contact and keep even stress in the frame. That makes sense. Right, when you have you know equal pressure on all tires, it really reduces some yeah, stress. that makes sense. Yeah. And I know you were talking about earlier, you guys are really successful in the manure business. Yes. I mean, obviously, I don't know how big this is. 7,500 gallons, probably? Uh, 7,650. 7,650. You uh, make it easy. That is really easy. <laughs> it's not like a 1987 and it's like 1,900 gallons. Yes. Like that. So whatever yep. you got on there is what it is. Correct. But obviously, these things hold a ton of weight. Yes. And would you guys say that you guys were in the manure, manure business before the grain cart business? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and so the company got started with dry manure spreaders back in the late 60s. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we started with that, and then in the early 80s, we bumped into liquid manure. Makes sense. And then it was early 2000, I want to say about 2002, mm -hmm. um, we were kind of just looking at, you know, potential new products, you know, what can we do? And we had the frame, and it's like, well, let's put a grain buggy on top of it. Makes sense. So it, it, this is where, you know, what we're most known for, mm -hmm. liquid manure, um, and now we're getting into been awesome. the grain cars now for a little while. Right. Because there's... As I was telling them before, there's not a ton in my area, but one thing that always makes me stick out that Walzer's equipment has is basically there's always more in the undercarriage. So yep. you don't see any grain cart with six tires on them. You don't see any grain cart with four tracks. So instead of just one long track, they have two. They have four of them. And that basically is your theory, did it just more ground tack, more ground contact area, yeah. or? Yeah. So we, I mean, we we dabble with the idea. We have a lot of flotation. Yep. Um, and we want to maintain that. And then along with that, we have maneuverability. That's and if you have point. two thousand bushel. And you put one track on each side, you, know, you got a big it's, turning radius. It's a lot to turn. Yeah. So it, it's, you know, how do we kind of overcome that issue? That makes sense. And it's, we have a tandem axle design, mm -hmm. and so we just kind of put that on track unit. Does any of the tracks steer at all? or yep. is it It's a rear axle really? steer. Really? Yeah, that's, that's why we went to that quad track. That makes sense. Yeah. It reduces, it's about a 40% about reduction in turning radius by having that rear steering. That's, that can be pretty big if you're yes. going like a 24, if you basically took two 12 row passes, I mean, that's... That's a big difference there and having to go all the way down to the end of the field or turn right there. Yep. That makes sense. Yep. That's and awesome. uh, the, the other benefit of having you know triple axles and then going to the quad track mm -hmm. is we have steps. You know, where okay. you want for flotation. Mm -hmm. We can put you know 900 tires on, 1,000 series, and 1050 tires on makes sense. before you want to go to tracks. That's so that's nice. I mean, you know, money talks and you, <laughs> you can provide a slightly cheaper product for uh -huh. with you know equal flotation. That makes and, sense. And, like that. That's awesome. So I guess yeah. overall length of your car, do you guys find yourself being just a little bit longer, but with that probably a little bit shorter just to get that same capacity as competitors? So actually, some carts are longer than ours. Yeah. Um, actually, the Brent 2500 bushel now is still longer than ours. Well, because that's what I was saying. This is 2500 bushel, two and yeah. a half times our biggest grain cart at home. And it's really not as long as I thought it'd be. Nope. Like it's uh, probably five to six feet longer than what our current one is because our spout reaches out the back yeah so yeah yeah we don't have the slant at the back mm -hmm. it, it's all right here we have extensions that fold out but there are limitations with the building yeah it's uh, uh, <laughs> not the biggest building we're in right now so it, I doubt that we have our suspension lowered or our extensions are folded in so those fold out and it'll be you know, oh. it's 18 feet wide oh wow at the top Okay, so, extensions are folded out. so it's kind of almost like in theory, like a green card or like a combine hopper that kind of folds yep. out. Okay. Yep, that makes yep. Sense. in theory. So it's uh, it, that pulled out, and on the 2550, there is actually more capacity up in the extensions really than there are in, in the hopper. So you get about 1100 bushel in just this portion right here. Wow, and the extensions add get the rest. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. So, how yep. tall is it when it's fully uh, unfolded? The low side, so we have, you know, this would be the high oh, side. Oh, that makes sense, yep. The low side. Yep. Uh, high side's about a little over 14 feet, and the low side's 12.9. Okay, that makes sense. So yep. Just about any combine should be able to get under it. Any, yep. any, any larger combine. Yes, <laughs> yep. So then, you know, really, you know, guys like this, but, you know, our biggest, biggest ones tend to go to flat areas. Right. Um, and that more has to do with being able to unload on the go. Right. And not having to worry about that auger clearance. Yep. You know, if, if this hits your auger on your combine, it, 
this isn't going to get hurt. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly so. right. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> well, and I don't think so. We farm in a lot of hills. Yep. We definitely wouldn't be able to even pull up. probably a 2,000 bushel, let alone a 2,500 bushel. With even the biggest tractor out there, they got some pretty nasty hills. It, it gets, it, it, so we got, uh, our smallest now is 1550. Okay. You know, the problem with these carts, it's not, it's not being able to pull it, it's being able to stop it. That makes sense. And hence, disc brakes. Yes. Yep. That makes sense. Yep. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate no. all the information. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Yes, thank you. Here's what he was talking about with those extensions. That's kind of neat. Never heard of grain tank extensions like grain cart, but I guess you need to think of innovative ways to pack in 2,500 bushels because that is a lot. That is two and a half semis worth. Whew. So guys, those other buildings, so there's three buildings at the show. There's a the south wing, the north wing, and the west wing. In my opinion, the west wing is the coolest because there's just so many smaller and kind of more niche type of companies. It's really cool to kind of see, like, look at this. Antique tires for antique tractors. Who would have thought that there's a company selling, out there selling antique tires for antique tractors? That's awesome. Check out this rig. This thing's already been sold too. It's got a stainless steel tank on there, probably a four to 500 gallon tank on it. Got probably a 60 foot boom. It's got a Raven monitor in there. This thing's awesome. Oh, it's even got boom control and everything. Okay, I need to talk to someone about this. Alrighty guys, I'm here with Eric from GVM and he's got a pretty interesting rig behind us. So Eric, what do we got? What are we looking at here? Well, this is our F550 set up with a 550 gallon sprayer on it. We call it our hydro spray. Hydro spray, hydro I like spray. it. GVM's been making a version of this for about 20 years now. Okay, wow, that's awesome. Because like, obviously as you guys can see from a normal sprayer, this isn't what you typically see. Like usually it's a tractor pulling a tank or a, a self-propelled sprayer, but you don't see a ton of truck bed sprayers. And Eric's got a good, pretty good reasons why this thing fits some operations. Yeah, smaller farmers who have uh, fields that maybe aren't giant in size, maybe like 20 to 30 acre mm -hmm. max size fields, maybe a little bit bigger than that. This gives you a real versatile piece of equipment that you can get to a field. Yep. Maybe they're far apart. Maybe you got 50 or 20 mile radius in your farmstead. You're able to fill and get to places quickly uh, at road speeds and be able to shoot. This is a 60 foot boom we have on here. So it really is versatile in getting in and out of small fields and yeah. being able to spray them. Pretty good coverage. So talking to him beforehand, he's basically kind of selling me on this thing. So a little bit about our, as you guys know, we have a good core of our farms and basically within a two mile radius, but then we have 20 miles north, 15 miles west, 25 miles south. And it's a two person job to basically haul my tender trailer out there and haul my sprayer. Well, with this thing, it's got a hitch on the back as we were seeing. It would not be that hard to basically just hook onto the wagon and just pull it to wherever we need to. So it's, it, it seems like a really cool option. And what'd you say the top speed on this thing was? Oh, I'm sure it would go highway speeds if you're serious about it. Highway speeds on a sprayer, that is unheard of because mine goes 27. So yeah. that's, I mean, that's, if I'm going 20 miles, that's half the time. It certainly that's is. That's awesome. It cover some ground. That, that's exactly right. And you said this is on a F550 F chassis? F550 chassis. Awesome. Power stroke diesel engine. Sweet. 550 gallon capacity on the tank. That's cool. What about the cab? How's everything in there? Like, is it like a normal kind of sprayer yeah, controls? I don't think they've got it open, but you can take a peek Get inside. a peek in there? Yeah, it's, everything's like a normal pickup. Oh, wow. And you've got your spray monitor in there, and you've got your sprayer handle, just like you would on a small sprayer. That is awesome. All your switches, your section control, everything's built in there. That is really cool. Yeah, you definitely don't see any, I've never seen anything like this, and that's why I was like, I need to stop and talk to these yeah, guys. Yeah, the one thing you didn't cool. mention is the comfort level. Oh, that's true. Considering your standard sprayer, you can have a sidekick with you, you can take two people with you. So somebody, if you want somebody to do some mixing for you when you're out spraying, you got a guy that you can take with you, and it's comfortable. That's true. I mean, Fords are pretty nice cabs. No one can really deny that. It's true. That's awesome. Well, Eric, I do appreciate it. Thank you yeah. so much. Hey, thanks for coming by. No problem. Appreciate it. Guys, I got the perfect solution for you. No one you have soybeans that are over 14 feet tall. There you go. That's what you got to do. Put your this little draper thing on your on your loader tractor, raise it up, and you can cut whatever you need. Looks like a, some form of a hemp harvester. Macdon booth right now. This thing's pretty sweet. Let's go see if we can get in the cab. Pay no attention to this guy. Ah, uh, never been in a Macdon. Macdon uh, uh, windrower. Never been in a Macdon windrower before. 
A, I didn't realize that the head could lift up this much. So let's just kind of look at the controls here. I don't like this. So this is a this is at a pretty weird angle. The hydro handle is. I like all the la the button layouts right next to everything. Like there's nothing and stuff here, stuff there, stuff there. Uh, there is a radio here, but that's fine because I actually like you get a little grab handle here. Well, all your turn sig your turn signals here. Okay, I don't like that. Your turn signal should be up here. I mean, that's just standard like you're driving a car. I don't like that your turn signal is right here. Everything else, I don't mind being right here. Throttle, that's kind of neat. So I've never been in a MacDown wind rower before, but it's kind of cool. So Dude, there's two, a lot of room. It is actually a you ton can of room. sleep in the buddy seat. There's a, there's a lot of room, but there's not a lot of forward cab room. Like in a deer combine cab, you can almost extend out. Look on like the buddy seat. Yeah, the buddy seat's got a lot of room. Yeah. I wonder if this thing can flip around. I know the older MacDons, they used to be able to flip around. The whole cab? Yeah, the whole, the whole, the whole, basically the seat, the seat was in the middle of the cab and it could spin. So you, you went down the road going this way. Wow. And this might be it. I think it is. No, there's no way. There's not enough room in the back. Yeah, these older, older MacDon models, I know you could spin the cab and face this way for mowing, but face that way for driving down the road. Yeah, your corner of the cab would go into your engine. Yeah, yeah, that wouldn't work. <laughs> this one, this one doesn't do that. But so I don't like three things I don't like about this: not enough forward room. I can, I'm like pretty crammed. Turn signals right here and hydro handle. I do not like this angle. But what I do like, pretty wide. The buddy seat's got a ton of room. I like this kind of module right here, minus these turn signals. You don't have to, you don't have stuff everywhere. And there's a ton of side room. So overall, it's kind of nice, but there's none in my area, so we will never try one. Put an iPad, some auto steer, watch some Netflix, I, I think there's mounting rails right here, so. <laughs> Let's bounce. So I just went through building number two, that one right there. There's not really a ton of interesting stuff. All right, so I'm not sure where the GoPro died at last, but just, just look at those two. They're, they're so popular. Aw, that's cute. Look at there's Brian and there's Ryan. Aw, that's cute. So guess who I ran into? Guy from Sun Farms. Holy Sunny. Sun we just went over we there. We just went over there. <laughs> so this is why I'm really bad at grammar. I, I like math. I, if I could talk in numbers, it'd be great. Sunny Farms. Yep. I should just, you know, right there. Yeah. Oh, I'm wearing a shirt. I forgot. <laughs> hey, that's, all, that's how I recognize you. I was like, we, so we met in the aisle. I was like, wait, is that who I think it is? And I turned this way and I was looking for it. I was like, oh, it is. But anyway, so he's a farmer in South Dakota. He's got some great videos because he's got, he's kind of like me where he's got cattle, but he's also got the row crop on the side of things. So it's kind of, you get a good variety throughout Diversity. the year. That's yeah. exactly right. So it's kind of cool. And he's also got the biggest one that I can remember. You get one where a cow barreled through a fence. Yeah. That was, that was, I think, the first video the I funny, saw. The yours. funny thing about that is, you know, we thought we were going to call her, take her to town because yep. she's crazy. Well, the next morning, she jumped out of that pen already. And so she's back in with the herd. So oh, I guess geez. we're calving her another just year. <laughs> Did, you tried to get rid of her, but nope, she just wanted to stick yeah, around. I guess she does. She, oh, she calves just fine, but. Apparently when we get her up, she likes jumping fences. So. Yeah, well, it's just with, with cows like that, it doesn't matter if they're calf fine. You just, if you don't feel comfortable working around yeah, them, the we're thing. the same way. We, we get rid of them. Yeah. So. But anyway, you got to check them out on on Instagram and YouTube for sure. Yeah, thanks for the plug. Oh, no problem. Nice seeing you. This thing's kind of cool. It's basically going to siphon her. So all you got to do is shake it a little bit. It'll... It'll siphon water from there to there. It's kind of neat. All right, I think that makes, we've seen every single booth that there is here. So I think we're just gonna go walk around now, get some lunch here soon. Maybe we'll see, see if Brian and Ryan's line is tamed down a little bit. Guys, guys, it's, it's Brian. It's, it's Brian, I'm, I'm so excited. I, 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 I. He's judging me because I waited in line to see him. I, that's how much I care about you, Brian. I don't, I don't appreciate you, the lack of empathy that you. I don't even know what I'm trying to say. Here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking over his channel now. This is not mine. I took over a bunch of other people's channels. No, if anyone's gonna do it, you gotta let the. Funny Surprisingly, person. he didn't take over mine yet. That you know of. Boss can take over now. Hi guys, now I'm the one taking over his channel. Finally, we got someone good to look at. <laughs> Maybe a little more funnier, but I don't know about good looking. <laughs> so we just had a lot of fun not too long ago. We just had a bunch of YouTubers, just about all the social media personalities we had at the show. Just kind of all congregated on Ryan and uh, 
Ryan and Brian's meet and greet and I'm preferred, so I just kind of split off on them, said my goodbyes to most of them, so now I'm going to look around, look for some stuff that I potentially will be buying, uh, potentially a new tarp and whatnot. We'll see what else we can find, but this is kind of slowing down on the show. We've got a couple more hours left and then I'm going to be taking off. Alrighty guys, I am just packing up for the 2020 National Farm Machinery Show. It was a fun show, got to meet a lot of people. Some people, the same people as last time, met a lot of new faces, met a lot of you guys. So, so thank you all to you guys who came up to me and said hi. I really did appreciate it. I loved every single one of our conversations. Be sure if you guys ever do see me again, whether it be in public or anything like that, be sure you say hi, don't be afraid. I love chatting with you guys and seeing how you guys came across the channel, everything like that. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow us on Facebook. Facebook and Instagram at Hard Dunk Family Farms. And of course, guys, as always, ta-ta for now.